if you look at this, how will this testimony of uh, the high profile people like cabinet ministers and uh, help the commission in its search for the truth? Well, the commission has gone through, uh, I've, I've seen many witnesses, especially the last few weeks, those were mainly police witnesses, and now it is the, the, the time of the, the Minister of Police at the time. We know that the National Commissioner, uh, Drea Piecha, also last year uh, appeared before the commission for a very long period. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what they want to establish now is the political responsibility of this. The Minister of Police is ultimately politically responsible for the Department of Police and the police uh, persons there deployed. Um, and he must explain what is the overall po policy of the police um, and what happened at that particular moment. You know, to what extent was he as the Minister as well as the Department of the Police uh, aware of and involved in the decision making there. Will the outcome of the Marikana Commission affect Minister Natim Tetua, his credibility, his credibility politically? Will it do that or, or don't you think that's, that's on the table? I don't think it's on the table, no. uh, unfortunately to some extent, because up to now no, no one has taken responsibility for Marikana, mm -hmm. both in a criminal sense as well as in a political sense. Um, and I think this, this is the tendency in, in South Africa at the moment, is that ministers refer to their senior officials. We think about all sorts of the Nkantla situation, mm -hmm. the Waterkloof and the Guptas, and now Marikana also. So I don't think this is, uh, at, at this stage, his political position or his position in cabinet will be uh, af affected by, by this testimony of his. What about fingers being pointed at the police commissioner, Ria Piecha? Yes, she indeed will have to account in the end, or the commission will have to decide how she presented herself and whether she how she accounted herself and to what extent she must take responsibility as the most senior official uh, in the police department for what happened there. Cyril Ramaphosa is also uh, uh, part and parcel of the people being called uh, to the commission. Uh, that monkey on his back, Marikana, will that affect him at all? I think I don't think so. You know, he's, he's in, he goes into this uh, hearing now in the capacity as one of the directors of Lonman, not as the deputy president of the ANC. Mm -hmm. Because the ANC is not part of the terms of reference for, for this uh, uh, commission. So he will have to explain what happened at the time, you know, the so-called the emails that are often referred to, and his call to the police to act, and that it was seen more as a criminal instead of a labor relations matter. So he will, they, he will most possibly be investigated or um, questioned about what was his intention, what was the relationship between him and the police and Lonman uh, company. But I think he is now so well established now after the election, he's number two on the list of the ANC, he most possibly will be the deputy president, so I don't think it's going to affect him. If we look at the questions that uh, the, the minister, uh, uh, the police minister, Natiem Tetua, and even maybe Ria Piecha might be called back to, to, to the commissioner, says, what sort of questions do you think they will face? I, th I think they will face questions about, because he's the minister, he's the one who's in the first instance responsible for the policy, the mm -hmm. general policy of the department. So he will be questioned about what is the policy and the, and the implementation part of that policy. What is the oversight role of the department and himself? How does him, what are the measures that exist in order to, to make sure that these type of, of, of events are not supposed to happen? What is the level, at, again at the policy level, what is the level of training that the, that the police received? Um, and also the line of command, uh, the, the hierarchy of command within the police. So it is the overall management of the police department as well as the police on the ground. I think mm -hmm. you will be questioned about that and to what extent it was sufficient and effective enough and, uh, and can he account for mm -hmm. what happened on that day or was it just the people, the commanders on the ground who took the decision without the knowledge of the head office and the minister? We just had elections 2014. Now would you say what happened in Marikana maybe dented the ruling party, the ANC support in the northwest province provincially? Well, I think we saw a, a significant growth by the EFF in the northern northwest. They have become the official opposition now. And I think these events, Marikana and the strike afterwards, 
Certainly, you know, had an impact on the way in which the EFF received some support um, in there, as well as even the UDM in the Eastern Cape, you know, because many of the workers are in, in the platinum belt actually comes from, come from, from the Eastern Cape. So I think it did affect largely the UDM, but very specifically the EFF in the Northwest. The uh, Marikana Commission has been ongoing for quite a while now, Professor. Uh, do, do we see a likely outcome of this to be satisfactory to the workers? <coughs> Well, they have now an, a new mandate on or terms of reference until the end of July. Most, uh, like the, uh, the human rights groups, for example, Human Rights Watch and others are saying, and the, our Human Rights Commission, all of them are saying it's not enough time. It won't be able to, just those list of, of witnesses who are already listed, that they won't be able to, to finalize that. Um, now with the removal of clause 1.5 or paragraph 1.5, the second phase has been terminated, and that is to, 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 to determine what is the socioeconomic context within which this took place, as well as what is the role of other departments, um, like the Department of Mineral Resources and the Department of Labor, and even some other government agencies in the events at Marikana, as well as the context of the events. I don't think, well, we certainly won't see uh, any report on phase two, Mm -hmm. um, but even about phase one, which is just about what actually happened on those, the, that period in August, um, I don't think maybe they will be able to complete that sufficiently. But uh, it has been now for more, almost two years going, and I think uh, the government wants to conclude this investigation as soon as possible. Professor, once again, thank you so much for your analysis and coming into studio for us. Thanks very okay. much. That was uh, Professor, political analyst Professor Dirk Kotzer here in studio with us. Let's go abroad now. South Korea has brought charges against the captain and three senior crew members of a ferry that capsized last month. The three senior members will face charges of homicide. Eleven other surviving crew members will be charged with negligence. The ferry killed more than 280 passengers, many of them schoolchildren.